What's going on, folks? You got Fantastic Forum here with the writer, producer, and director of Bad Kids Go to Hell, Mr. Barry Wernick. And Matthew Spradley. Absolute. Thank you for taking the time to go ahead and talk to us, fellas. You could be inside partying really hard. I know, you, we could be. I know. So we. we must <laughs> really like you. I know, I agree. I agree. We appreciate it. So, fellas, tell me, how does it feel to finally get this movie out to a mass of people and for them to see? It's, incre it's yeah. an incredible sense of relief, and it's also a big, it's very rewarding. You know, it's mm -hmm. like you finally, you've been working on hard on something, and you finally get to put it in front of an audience and you get to see their reaction to what you've been working on and the, you know and like you know doing something like this you know being a comic con it's that's the that's the big payoff mm -hmm. yeah you could do it anywhere but to do it at comic con where we actually had our first issue and we were here july of 2009 with our first issues mm -hmm. and uh seeing those same fans who saw us three years ago mm -hmm. and seeing them actually being able to watch it right. on yeah. the big screen. And you know, back then it was pretty crazy because here we were, we had written it as a movie originally. Mm -hmm. Bad Kids Go to Hell was our movie. Right. And uh, Rider Strike, everything else, David Atchison, buddy of ours said to Matthew, turn it into a comic book. Matthew says to me, turn it into a comic book? I said, no superheroes, no capes, whatever, okay. <laughs> we'll still do it. And, it, and actually it was, it was great because we got to meet the fans. We got to build a good fan base who enjoyed what we had written, and we still retained rights to our property, and we're able to make our movie. Nice. And what was crazy is we always told everyone, "Oh yeah, this is a movie," and they're like, "Yeah, right." That's the <laughs> and we actually never even did we ever say it wasn't gonna. We were like, "No, we no, it's gonna be a movie. It it's gonna be like yeah. ah, that's what they all say." And here we are. Here it you know, is. It's great. It's such so, a, a such a short amount of time too, considering where you know it's like I know people that go this same route and. Their movies never get made, or it takes years and years. You know, what, what was the, what do you feel was the driving force that made it so that you could do it in such a short amount of time? Jedi mind trick. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we always just, you know, I think it really was, it was the two of us just by hook or by crook, mm -hmm. we were gonna make this, we were gonna make this yeah. film. Mm -hmm. We just knew we were going to do it, no matter what. People, I mean, this is a testament to people saying no and not believing, and you have a lot of jaded people out there and people, and there are a lot of people that make their, Sure, they don't, want you, they don't want you to They do don't it. want you to, you got the yeah. automatic people that just want to hate you because, uh-oh, they might actually do what I've been saying can't be done. But you know what? Anyone can do it, I think, if you just work Put hard and believe. Yeah. And, you, and you know what? And you you appreciate your fans who actually care about what you're doing. Right. And that's what's so great about the Comic-Con experience and going to bookstores and doing signings and meeting your fans. Right. You, meet, you meet people that are rooting for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not meeting people that are rooting against you. You're actually right. meeting people that are rooting for you. Nice. And are like, you know, want you to do it and want to see the next stage of evolution. That's, that's an amazing. You know? And they want to see who you're casting as these characters that they've, oh, the they've whole, become, you know, they've fallen in love with. Mm -hmm. The whole you know, casting like, experience, that whole, we, we actually right. let our fan, we said, here's on our movie, on our uh, comic book site at the time, badkidsgotohell.com, we had a you cast the movie section. Yeah, and we wanted our fans to give us suggestions. And, who do you want to see, you know, die in this movie? Who do you really hate? No. <laughs> right. and who's a great actor? Who, who are the people that you want to see and it's, in our movie? That's, and, and that's why, like, overwhelmingly, Judd Nelson, everyone was like, that would be a right. cool head right. And that's, that's so, why this yeah, movie, like, we always wanted to premiere this at Comic-Con because our, the, the process of making a comic and then doing a film for us has been so interactive with all the fans mm -hmm. that that's the really? spirit of Comic-Con. Right. That is the spirit of Comic-Con is interacting uh, creators with fans. So right. we're, you know, there's no other place that we should, we should debut this than here because that is, that's what, that is what Comic-Con is about. Yeah, it's not about a Westwood uh, no. a premiere. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Like, no. no. Just what did done. it feel like for you guys watching the dailies and reading those um, lines that you wrote, saw printed and saw you know the expression from the artist and then watching them deliver them and not just deliver them, deliver them well? I think I think what I did, and you make a good point there, but I said at the end of this, uh, the premiere tonight to the audience, I, I couldn't say it enough. And I'm glad you realize it too, but it's so hard to find young actors that are true professionals and incredible actors. and. It, and you have a lot of these uh, 
what they'll call just a horror movies and you throw in right. someone they don't care about, they're gonna chop off his arm or whatever right. or slasher type. Or just and they don't put enough, <laughs> no, they don't put enough emphasis on on story or on acting. Right. Right. Because they figure out they're just kids. They don't know. Right. And we were so fortunate when we sat in there and, you and wa watching, yeah, them. You we were like, where did they actor, come from? <laughs> an, act, an actor's performance simply. It, it elevates the material. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter how good or how not good of a writer we are. If you if the performance isn't there, mm -hmm. then all those lines and all that time you spent writing something is just wasted. Right. It's wasted time. Yeah. So a great actor, you know, a really a really solid actor, like totally elevates your material and makes it work. <laughs> and uh, does things that we didn't even realize. Right, and like, does, I mean, here we were and like. You're, oh, yeah. Wow. You, you look at one. You look at it this way, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, they do what they do best. Right. And you, it, it gives. Then you're surprised. Yeah. For that is, we we had a few <laughs> actors come in and come out of. It was like out of left field, and we're like, we know this material. We've written it. Right. What are right. you talking about? Right. Right? <laughs> okay, do it. Do and it. then it was like, wow. Yeah. Jeez, Speaking so. of having written the material, it's like I mean, of course we we read the graphic novel. Um, Talk about what it is that, or how it is you decided what to put into the movie and what to leave out. That's good. Uh, well, uh, specifically we, the pudding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the pudding and the tossing of the note to um, oh, the character that strip. Right, right. Uh, we knew we knew we had to. The the movie really is a lot more streamlined than the graphic novel because. <laughs> First of all, you, you have to be a little bit, you have to be a little bit bigger, a little bit crazier in a comic, because you know how it is when you read, it's something like this can't be really subtle, mm. but you can play more subtlety and more, uh, you know, we, we wanted to tone down the supernatural element a little bit mm -hmm. compared to what it is in the comic, mm -hmm. you know? We so wanted that, to that make was, it that realistic. That was probably the most major thing, yeah. is like toning down the supernatural We element. wanted it to be a, re when it ends, you're like, that could happen. Yeah, that really, there's, yeah, right. So that was that was the major thing was okay. was turning the volume down in some on some aspects uh -huh. for the comic, uh -huh. and then emphasizing more uh, the more the motivations and, and and what these characters had had done. It was so terrible. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the too because as bad as the kids are in the graphic novel, in the movie, yeah, there's no question yeah. these kids are bad, <laughs> right. and there's no question that as beautiful and good looking and whatever they are right. as actors right. and actresses um they suck really bad <laughs> right. you enjoy <laughs> in the transition i noticed um from reading the book a lot of um camera angles and shots were almost direct mm -hmm. but um the music in it made it even more dynamic it was already kind of dynamic in the in book the, in like the it felt like a movie mm -hmm. like, but the music really helped how did the process of picking the music come around i mean that was we were really really we, we had our mind we had our mind again it's one of those things where you have your mindset on this music and then all of a sudden you start you're like well we can't get this song to write it you know you could the can't license the rights, it's mm -hmm. a little bit too much. So then you start looking at alternatives and all of a sudden you're finding better alternatives to yeah, what, than you, what you initially what you thought initially you were gonna thought. use. Mm -hmm. then so then who, who was the biggest pain in the ass to try to get music from? <laughs> uh, no one. No one. <laughs> ah, no, it's no, a good answer. You know no, what? No. <laughs> well, you know what? No one that we use in our movie. Right. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. everyone in everyone that we used in the movie was a fan. We showed him a clip, we gave him and they were like, oh wow. And this I is and cool. I never thought I would I would live to say these words. But Red Bull Records <laughs> I know, we got we They got, were so awesome. Yeah, we got <laughs> they were fantastic. They were so great to work with. Inner nice. Party System and AWOL Nation. Nation. Yeah. And they nice. were like, you know, they're totally on board. Well, let's work with you. Let's, let's do it. We'll we want to be a part with. of this. Right. Um, we had, uh, and, and Cobalt even, Music, Cobalt Music, the publishing, the mm -hmm. Jennifer Smith from Cobalt Music. Mm -hmm. I mean, she threw us music that was just unreal. The M Machine out of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca and Fiona out of Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just the stuff and, she was coming up with, and we were like, and it was, oh, so. and even the people that you would, you would assume would Semi be a little bit tough, weapon. yeah, with Universal mm -hmm. Music, they were like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, Warner we'll Chapel, and, yeah, and they were like, and, wow, uh, this is great. It Universal speaks to the music. material. Yeah, they were, lo they loved it. So, so you got Semi Precious Weapons. There's so many great, um, 
gosh, I don't even know who did I leave out anyone. I don't know. No, but and I left then, out and a, lot, the a lot of the local. The I was local saying. bands were just were fantastic to work with as mm -hmm. well. So yeah, from yeah. from uh, one of the scenes uh, in Hex, the cafeteria, Hex John, Dispensers. you had the Hex Dispensers, and you had uh, a giant dog for the dance scene the dance at the scene. end there. <laughs> That's and great. I mean, you know what? We were going to use. Uh, that's it. In our mind, we thought it was bad reputation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, everyone, you, but then you, everyone keeps on using that same song. song. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we found this, and we were like, but what else would we have? And Lawrence Boone out of Austin, who's just a music genius, loves music, has everything. We would say, we need something, but something fresh, mm -hmm. original, cool. And uh, every he single was, time we went to him, we said, we can't find this. He, he would come up with some local Austin band. Wow. He give us two options. We go, well, they both work. How come we, everyone else has given us like 15, 16 <laughs> songs? And, we're like, oh. and they just were like, great. And I'm glad that you mentioned the music because when everyone leaves the theater, whether it was in a focus group, mm -hmm. when we uh, showed it to distributors, um, first thing they said was, uh, do you have rights to this music? Uh, where'd you get this music? <laughs> yeah. We're like, yeah. yeah we actually yes, we do. do. Oh, yeah. Is there a soundtrack release? Um, we haven't even, I don't even know what, what, I guess that's to be determined, thing. Okay. but yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be amazing. I think it merits it, because, oh, yeah. especially yeah. the way the music adds yes. to this film, to the film. It, it just, it, it's a different experience than reading the comic, yeah. in a good way. I've had a lot of those experiences, and they've been bad, right. you know, <laughs> like being a fan of comics and movies. Yeah. So, speak, speak just a little bit to who, what the audience, I know you want everyone to see it, of course, but right. what yeah. kind of audience do you think, uh, this movie will will bring to it. Look what kind of audience you think we'll get. <laughs> well, I'll tell you how it was in, in comic book conventions. When, okay. Uh, when we had uh, people, uh, you know, in their 40s and 50s come over and say, "Hey, I loved your comic book. Really good. Oh, by the way, my 17-year-old daughter thinks it's awesome too." Ah, nice. And when you have like a the parents and the kids right. really coming together, really enjoy right. it. It's pretty cool. You right. know, I mean, so but but I think I mean it's primarily. It's hard, it's edgy, it's fast, yeah. it's fast moving. And I think especially younger younger people totally mm -hmm. get it. And what's great about it is, um, I think they get the message too. It's mm -hmm. not just fun, right, but right. you see that it's, you know, as cool as we all think we are right. and entitled as we are, well, no, uh, right. you know, <laughs> there's no reason for that, <laughs> I know. Final, no, but you know. Final question, one word. To sum up Comic Con 2012, what do you think? One word. Super califragilistic <laughs> That's a good <laughs> word. Yeah, I like it's, that. It's, it's, it's beyond like it's beyond description. I like, know. It, and that's the thing. It's, it's it, Comic Con is beyond description. You know what I mean? You tell everyone. I know exactly. Because right, you, you go every year. We go and you and go every know. year, and then you don't even know what to say. Right, and you're you like, have to go to know. Yeah. People that don't. Is crystal meth one word? <laughs> it can be. I think it has a hyphen. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it's it's Barry and Matt. They did bad kids go to hell. They're awesome. Make sure you go see it when they let you uh, have that opportunity. This year, this year, this year all around the world too. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Thanks a lot.